Greetings and salutations runners. It's Ed, Comeback Trail Bud here. Today I've got an odd video for you, a combination of shoe unboxings and an update on my injury. A whole host of shoes here to unbox for you and enjoy. Thanks for joining us here on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews. Always appreciated, friends. Always. If you're feeling like you want to help us out, do hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new tidbits for you, those new delicacies. We'll bring them out from the kitchen and present them to you, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. A whole host of shoe unboxings for you today, guys. We'll do some initial thoughts, maybe even a bonus smell test. I'll also be updating you on the progress of my shoulder injury, sustained by being appended by some mongrels a while ago. So updates on the injury situation first. So after a recent trip to the orthopedic clinic, I was given the thumbs up, sort of. Yeah, good news, my shoulder was making some good progress. There were no movements there, nothing was out of place. It was all where it needed to be, and that was good. It was like music to my ears. Good progress with the fracture, and after the consultation, they said that they didn't need to do any more x-rays. Everything was looking pretty decent. As such, it's been a couple of weeks of allowed physio movements, really, which is basically pendulum-like actions where you've got to sort of lean onto a stable surface and then using your body's momentum, just sort of move your arm around forwards and backwards, left and right, and in some circular motions. So I can really feel that improving daily. I'm getting more and more movement back there. There's not really any pain. It just sort of gets to a certain point and you know that you're reaching that sort of position where it's starting to go into an area that needs some work. I'm not allowed to put it forward further than about 90 degrees at the moment in terms of my right arm, which all of this, to be honest, in fairness, is better than I thought that it would be at this point. It's like best case scenario stuff for me. Not really any pain there anymore, and certainly my elbow, that's completely healed up. Those pendulum motions that I've been doing for physio have helped massively, so much so that I can even pick up a guitar and do a little bit of finger picking. No strumming yet. I can, but I don't want to go too far forward. Doing what the professionals tell me to do rather than what I think I should do because I'm not a professional when it comes to this stuff. I can do some of those basic things again like getting dressed, cleaning my teeth and also making a cup of tea. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to actually fill the kettle up using only one hand. I'm a lucky, lucky guy. Proximal humerus fractures can be long-term problems. A lot of people may have permanent restriction of movement. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that way for me. And I'm really, really glad about that. I'm counting my blessings. Been taking the physio very seriously and continuing to use the sling just for the moment. As such, only a couple of days ago did I get out for a run. Bit of a test effort. It was bitterly cold out there at that time, quite late in the evening couple of miles around the favorite route, the trading estate. Despite those chilly temps, absolutely no pain in the shoulder or elbow, not even a twinge. Kept the pace super easy. I think it was about nine minutes, five seconds a mile, something like that. Wrapped myself up with a couple of long sleeve tops and a jacket as well, just to be on the safe side. Cold is the enemy when you've got some sort of bone related issue. Kept my arm in the sling just to protect it a little bit from any jarring movements. No problems to report there. And it was just really great to get out and get some fresh air. Got out again today for a 5k run i think it's about eight minutes 20 per mile a little faster than i thought i was going to be able to go i don't know what those new shoes perhaps these felt nice and nimble quite responsive on foot oddly easier to run in actually without all that cushion than the vomero 16 which i took out on my first run back so it'd be a good idea to wear these just so that people would see me coming there weren't any problems with pedestrians or anything literally the brightest shoes in my collection almost radioactive aren't they the trading estate, both the other night and today, was as quiet as a grave. That tried and trusted route. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually missed it. I was really missing that route. The recycling centre, the box making factory, the amateur dramatics practice area, and the indoor climbing centre as well. I missed all those places going round and round in circles. So going to start to scale things up very, very slowly. Don't want to overdo it. There's muscles and things I haven't really been used all that much for a little while. So I'll bring in some faster paces and also start to increase my confidence a little bit. There were a couple of moments there where I had little flashbacks of when that incident happened. Although it was a completely different place, different location, it's still there. Oh God, you know, what happens if I fall over? The other issue I've got at the moment is I'm suffering for some nasty toothache, which is 
Not nice. Well on the way to getting that sorted though, so no worries, mate. I'll give you another update a little way down the line, but looks like I'm back. Thanks for all your kind messages on Strava and over here on YouTube. It's really appreciated, guys. Everyone's been tuning in to watch while I've been trying to come up with as many different video types as I can. I really appreciate your support, guys. Thanks a lot. Moving on, we got three new pairs of running shoes in for some mile mashing in the near future. Pair number one from Adidas. Actually came in a bit of a battered box, as you can see. That should have uh, been a clue as to the condition of the shoes when I received them. The Prime X. Holy mackerel, guys, these are big. They hardly even fit on the screen. So I did order these from a very reputable dealer here in the UK, and they appear to have been a return. Someone must have purchased them and sent them back. I think they wore them a little bit. Seems like they might have had a little tread around the block in them, cleaned them up, you know, taking about 10 seconds to do it, and then fired them back to the generous fellows. Gotta be honest, I was a little bit upset at that. Um, they're not the cheapest of shoes, but the dealer did give me a very good refund, actually, a discount, I should say. So I salute them sportshoes.com. They were really quick actually to resolve my problem. It was done within hours, so thank you guys. I've bought a fair old number of shoes from them, so they're probably trying to keep me sweet. So the Prime X finally grabbed my attention enough that I wanted to pick up a pair. We have 305 grams in my UK size 11, which I think is a US 11 and a half. That's 10.7 ounces mainly of Light Strike Pro. When you see these from afar, they look quite similar to the Adios Pro 2, but actually when you get up closer, there's quite a few differences, mainly in that heel area there. And overall, the profile of the tongue is very different. It's almost like scalloped at the front there, in the front couple of eyelets. By rough calculation, the stack height here in the heel is 56 millimeters in my size. 56, whoa! And about 46 in the forefoot, so, it's a big one. If you got your fishing line into the pond and pulled this one out, you'd call it a whopper. I absolutely look like Mark Bolin when I put these guys on. I think it'll be a long, fast, and very straight initial run in them relatively soon. So a big old pair of nuggets here. Obviously, whoever bought them first just found them far too tall. And, you know, I've always felt a bit vertically challenged myself, so that's a lie. I might do a little poll down below and see which shoes people want me to review first out of these three. Here comes the next one. Here it comes. Shoe number two. The Magic Speed from Asics. I reckon these have got to be the most curved shoes I've ever received. It's just insane. Is that right? It can't be right. It can't be right. You could go into the orchard and pick up side raffles with that toe box. ASICs have sent these over to me, perhaps that I might use them for the ASICs World Ekadin event that I'm going to be taking part in a bit later this month. We got Flight Foam Blast, guys. It's definitely a bit more sort of rebound to this one. It does really remind me, in fact, of the Meta Racer. Mm, it's very, very soft. Soft to the touch. But Gallon's more heel padding there than the Meta Racer. I gotta be honest, I think this colorway looks tri tri triple fire. And we got a quite responsive midsole here, almost like a balsa wood plank compared to the copious cushion in the Prime X. Considerable weight difference though in these guys. 267 grams in my UK size 10 and a half is a US 11 and a half, which is about 9.4 ounces. Stack using my rudimentary methods is about 36 millimeters in the heel, which makes this a bit of an oddball really, because as you can see, I'm not sure they actually judged the forefoot height on this one. It is a bit of an elf-like Will Farrell design. Only a part plate in these, which is in that sort of forward section. Very different to actually many of those tempo or higher pace shoes I've tested out over the last few months. It certainly felt exciting getting this one on foot. Just testing out the sizing. You guys know I like something that's quite light and nimble. Something a bit more responsive. So I think the Magic Speed will be quite an exciting one to test out. Let's hope it's a bit more like Paul Daniels than Wizbit. There's more, there's more. It's another one from Asics. What have we here? Oh, this paper. Metaspeed Sky. All right, bud, with these shoes, you are spoiling us. Yeah, Asics, thanks for sending me over these. I shoe that, oh, I've got it in hand. It's kind of blowing my mind. What an absolute nugget. It's really, really nice. Although when I did open the box, Mrs. Edbud did comment that it had smelt like I'd poured a whole bottle of calamine lotion all over myself. The foam here is as flighty as Michael Jordan himself and as forgiving as a priest. 
The upper as minimal as a nicely tidied room with like a comfy chair, perhaps a Technics SL 1200 and a selection of your favorite vinyl records. Now this one is a 10 and a half UK, which is an 11 and a half US, only comes in at 224 grams in my size. Wow, 7.9 ounces of nothing. Again, with my arbitrary method of getting the heel stack here, I think I've got about 38 millimeters. It seems to add up, sort of. The standard garden center calamine lotion vibes here. Woo, woo, woo. God, blimey, it's a real stinker. Why is it that they all smell like that? There's loads of them. The Saucony shoes, the Asics shoes. It's gotta be something they're putting on these shoes. Maybe they're doing it just for me. Thanks Asics, I think these will come in handy when I get down to the Asics World Ecadon event with Andy, Kafuzi, and Emily. I'm looking forward to it. Boy oh boy am I looking forward to it. So a whole menagerie of shoes there to test out, get some more miles into. These felt really nice today, I've got to be honest. It was nice slipping the old feet into something a bit more responsive. I will have a poll down below somewhere, let me know which ones you want me to test out first. If it is the Prime X, I will be going with my Zimmer frame. I think it's time for a musical interlude. The artist today is Snail Mail with the new album Valentine. Particularly like the opening track there, some really interesting production choices. The track kind of builds up, builds up to the chorus and kind of explodes. I kind of like those tunes. And I really like the odd, strange, down-pitched guitars on Headlock as well. I'd never heard of the artist, I've got to be honest, beforehand, but really enjoying their material. We'll have to dip back into perhaps the first album and see if there's some nuggets of musicality there. Some really nice kind of off-kilter vocal lines here and the sort of dragging, slow, clunking rhythms on the track Automate. Do check this one out, guys. From Snail Mail, it's called Valentine. Thanking you for sticking with us till the very end of the video, guys. Always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help the channel hit the poppermost of the toppermost by hitting that subscribe button, but also clicking the bell below for notifications of when we knock them out for you. It also really helps the channel if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Good.